for the 1% rather than shared by all of us. Communicative capitalism enjoins us to share in an illusion to embrace a fantasy that extreme inequality is accidental, like a prize, rather than essential to the capitalism of global communication networks. My name is Laurent Deutscher, and I'm assistant professor of English here at UNL. And I'm Marco Abel, associate professor of English and film studies at UNL. The basic objective is to bring uh, cutting-edge theoretical research from the humanities to UNL. The idea came um, ultimately out of a perceived need that we wanted to bring together people from across campus, from the humanities, who are interested in theoretical research but who do their work in a certain form of isolation in their individual departments. And so we wanted to create a forum for uh, people from multiple disciplines to come together. At the same time, we also wanted to make sure that the um, uh, lecture series is actually integrated into our uh, teaching. In other words, uh, we also um, invite the speakers to participate in our classes, and we are also um, inviting our students to participate in our lectures. We decided to call the speaker series Humanities on the Edge because we wanted to address the sense of crisis that appears to be um, omnipresent today in the world. So not only uh, at the humanities, but uh, outside the academy as well. So the speakers that we invite uh, always address um, either directly or indirectly contemporary issues as well based on their own research. Or the frequency of its being visible, being seen, has nothing to do, of course, with it being taken down. Unless the author here is saying that Oka made a violent business decision, which raises a very interesting conjunction. Is it okay to be anti-intellectual if you're making a business decision? We're making an effort to invite people that come from all kinds of different disciplines in the humanities, so we have invited people and we continue to invite people who are from English studies, from film studies, from political science, from art history, from history, um, maybe in the future from anthropology, um, from philosophy, um, precisely because um, our vision for this speaker series, Humanities on the Edge, is to foster cross-disciplinary or interdisciplinary research. To put it very crudely, in a world of economic globalization, flat though unevenly so to say the least, it's not clear that mediated representations or signs matter as much as direct flows of various kinds. Money, goods, people, images. They, they two terms of the opposition are positive. Right? For that reason, the formula is, is A, B. And the division of biological life and poetic afterlife the National Brain of 1867 exemplifies the fusion of poetry and biology. This year's topic is biopolitics and biopower. The question of biopolitics and biopower has emerged over the last 20 to 30 years as one of the um, central problems for critical uh, theoretical research. So the um, um, guests that we invited uh, this year are actually uh, leading scholars uh, within this new field. Some of the people that we invited, for example, Michael Hart is probably the most famous scholar of this field uh, living today. Based on the first two, two years of the speaker series, politics and then biopolitics, we decided to go um, as a topic for year three with the um, question of aesthetics directly. Uh, not only because it relates to a lot of disciplines in the humanities who traditionally have attended to questions of aesthetics, but also because in the present, in the last 10-15 years, there has been an attempt to think um, the relationship between politics and aesthetics not as something that, uh, as it is traditionally thought, as opposed to each other, but rather that both politics has its own aesthetics and aesthetics its own politics. Uh, so as it is currently organized, each year we're bringing in four scholars, two in the fall, two in the spring, 
And all of these events are currently taking place at the Sheldon Museum of Art, um, which is a fantastic building uh, and provides us with a fantastic uh, auditorium um, that is a proper home for, for this kind of cross-disciplinary effort. Theory can be very difficult, right? Uh, at the same time, it's pure intellectual fun. And by pure, pure, I really mean that because of its abstraction, it's pure, right? You are allowed to play with ideas in ways that you're not necessarily always allowed to do. And I think we're both really hoping that somehow this message also goes out to the whole UNL community that uh, thinking in these broader terms is not only fun, but also actually necessary.